Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we have another wonderful reading from Anthony Norvell's amazing book, The Million Dollar Secret Hidden in Your Mind. This particular chapter is dedicated to becoming a receiving station for great ideas. Right now, if you open yourself up, you can become a receiving station for great ideas which will bring you prosperity, wealth, and a unique opportunity to be of great service to others. For many people, we close ourselves to these great ideas. This creative mind that is all around us is constantly streaming us with wonderful new ideas And there are ways that you can become a receiving station for these great ideas. Becoming a receiving station for great ideas by Anthony Norvell. Everything we see in the outer world is crystallized thought, mental energy frozen into matter. Science now knows that what looks like solid matter is in reality a vibrating mass of atoms that are in constant motion. The form they take seems to depend on some creative pattern that is one of the secrets of the universe. A French scientist studied frozen snowflakes for a period of 40 years to learn something of this secret of form and pattern that create the universe, and he learned an astonishing thing. No two snowflakes he looked at in that 40-year period ever looked alike. No leaf, no fern, no grains of sand are ever alike. The rose carries within its seed the image and likeness of all the roses that will ever be created from that seed. The acorn has hidden in its mysterious depths all the giant oak trees that will ever be created by the earth. The vibration that makes each form complete is a universal intelligence that is constantly shaping and creating in the invisible universe according to some secret pattern that nature has locked up in her vast storehouse of wisdom. As above, so below. There is a saying in philosophy, as above, so below. This means that the microcosm man reflects all the processes and creative principles that exist in the macrocosm, or the larger universe. Microcosm relates to an organism regarded as a world in miniature. Man is actually a world in miniature, and he reflects in all his mental and physical processes all the universal processes of growth, attraction, reproduction, and refinement. The seedling of reality is in man's own mind. His mind is the place where he creates the world in which he lives. When you once understand this principle, you will know that part of the million dollar secret that lies hidden in your mind exists in the creative power that every person has locked within his own human consciousness. There is a picture or pattern within your mind which has its counterpart in the universal intelligence. The same intelligence that creates the rose and the oak tree. There is only one major difference between the use of this creative power within your mind and that in nature. You, being a creature of volition and choice, may choose the pictures you wish to create in the outer world whereas the animals, birds, insects, and growing organisms in nature are forced to create according to a set pattern. What is the creative mind? This creative mind within man has been called various things by philosophers, psychologists, and mystics of all ages. Jung and Freud referred to the human psyche as being the repository of all mankind's racial memories and wisdom. What one man has thought or experienced or done may be the common property of all creative minds. You can reflect the knowledge of all the great minds that have existed since the beginning of time. Just as all chicks within the hen's egg know how to peck their way out of the shell, so too your creative intelligence knows how to work out all your problems, knows how to give you the ideas and inspiration to make all your dreams come true. You can become a receiving station for great ideas. Just as the famous men of history did, you can unlock the creative power of this higher mind within you. 
just as Napoleon did, as Michelangelo did in his creative masterpieces of marble and canvas. The power that was used by Lincoln, Columbus, Newton, Galileo, Edison, Washington, and Benjamin Franklin is a part of your own higher consciousness. You may tap that creative mind within and receive from it all the inspiration you need to build your future destiny in the pattern of greatness and genius, the divine flame within. When Moses used this creative power, he spoke of having heard a voice speak to him from a flaming bush. He was given the Ten Commandments and shown how to lead the lost tribes out of the desert to freedom. When asked who had given him this information, he replied, I am has sent me. Undoubtedly, this I am refers to the divine flame of creative intelligence that is in every living human being. You may turn to this higher mind and receive the information you need to lead you out of the barren desert places of your life into productive fields of action and creativity. The divine flame of inspiration works through your higher mind and can accurately point out the direction you are to take for achieving anything you desire in life. There are rules that must be followed. However, for this universal intelligence works under definite laws. William James called this transcendental power within man's mind, the superconscious mind. Emerson spoke of this intelligence in nature and often referred to it as the universal mind. He speaks of this mystery which encompasses all of nature and to which man may attune himself in these words. The rounded world is fair to see, nine times folded in mystery. Though baffled seers cannot impart the secret of its laboring heart, throb thine own with nature's throbbing breast, and all is clear from east to west. Spirit that lurks each form within, beckons to spirit of its kin. Self-kindled every atom glows, and hints the future which it owes. When your mind is in tune with the universal mind that underlies all of nature, and which flows throughout all creation, you are able to discern the secrets of the universe, and use this creative power for any constructive purpose. Picture and project your desires. Your mind has a tremendous electrical power that is able to reproduce accurately all the thoughts, feelings, sensations, sights, sounds, and other stimuli from the outer world. Think of the miracle of the eye alone. The brain works in amazing coordination with this organ of vision. You do not see with the eye, but with the brain. The brain can picture and project the vibratory pattern of anything you wish to create. An artist starts with a blank canvas, and what does he do? He consults the higher mind within for the image or concept he wishes to project and paint upon that canvas. The electrical pulsations of your mind are forms of creative energy. They have the power to create in the outer worlds of matter anything that you accurately picture in the inner world of mind. Scientists have discovered since the splitting of the atom that tremendous power can be produced when we are able to tap the invisible wavelengths of energy in the universe. Muhammad first discerned this secret power when he remarked, split an atom and at its heart you will find a sun. The human mind is in reality a tremendous atom-splitting cyclotron, for it is able to release a stream of dynamic creative energy and imprint upon the mold of the universal intelligence the pictures it holds within, and make them a glowing outer reality. A rainbow has as much reality as a skyscraper, an idea held in mind, has the ability to attract to itself all the elements it requires to build for you whatever it is you want in life. The great law of attraction and repulsion. There are vast, electromagnetic forces in existence in the universe, which scientists have discovered since sending spaceships out into the illimitable void of time and space. These electromagnetic forces work under the law of attraction and repulsion, the law that governs the gravitational force of Earth, Sun, and stars. This same electromagnetic force exists in the human mind. For the mind works under similar laws 
as those that control magnetism and electricity. In fact, the blood is mainly saline solution, for this is the greatest conductor of electricity. What intelligence devised this amazing system of sending nerve currents from the brain to all parts of the body instantaneously? This same intelligence is able to tap some mysterious power in the universe and produce that which is pictured or held in man's mind. Great men all use this power. Again, Emerson speaks of this great universal wisdom that all geniuses have tapped in these words. Raphael paints wisdom. Handel sings it. Phidias carves it. Shakespeare writes it. Wren builds it. Columbus sails it. Luther preaches it. Washington arms it. Watt mechanizes it. You, too, can become a receiving station for the great ideas that have inspired great men of all ages. The electrical law of magnetic attraction has the power to bring you that which you focus in your mind clearly and in detail, just as the artist forms his picture first in his mind. Alexander the Great pictured that one day he would conquer the world, and he did. Michelangelo pictured the great sculptures that have made him famous and which are in the great museums of the world today. This tremendous creative power does not stop working for us. Even when we are old, we can continue using it. When Michelangelo was 78, he was called out of retirement to decorate the Sistine Chapel of the Vatican in Rome. He worked for four years creating the magnificent figures on the walls, over 200 figures in giant proportions and no two alike. He lay on his back on a scaffold 75 feet high, painting his concept of God's creation of Adam and Eve and the entire universe. In one scene, the artist depicts God reaching out from heaven and touching the finger of Adam, inspiring man with the creative spark of life. This is truly a great symbol and shows that when man is touched by the finger of God, he literally becomes inspired and godlike in his concepts and stupendousness of his creative power. The philosopher Epictetus said of his higher mind, when you have shut your doors and darkened your room, remember never to say that you are alone, for you are not alone, but God is within, and your genius is within, and what need have they of light to see what you are doing? The Bible also speaks of this power within, which knows all, sees all, and is all-powerful and wise. Jesus spoke of this power as the one that did his great miracles. He said, It is not I, but the Father within, he doeth the work. Use this method to become a receiving station for great ideas. 1. Each night, upon retiring, spend a few moments picturing in your mind's eye the things you want to achieve, the things you wish to attract, the qualities and talents you want for your own, and even the people you want in your life. Feel that these things are already in existence awaiting your joyous discovery. 2. Ask the Father within to point out the way to your right work, to the finding or making of the money you need to pay your debts, to the knowledge you need to get you a better salary, to the finding of lost or hidden objects. As this power is all-powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, it works for all alike. It works to feed the birds of the air, and the Bible says of its provision for the lilies of the field, consider the lilies of the field, they toil not, neither do they spin, and yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Dr. Rhine and Extrasensory Perception Dr. Rhine tells in his book on extrasensory perception of how a girl whose father had died needed money desperately as he had left her with nothing. She dreamed one night that her father came to her and told her to look in a secret compartment of an antique dresser in the living room. The girl awakened and thought it a strange dream, but it was so realistic that she went to look for the secret compartment. She found it, and stuffed in it were many big bills, which her father had evidently saved for just such an emergency. How is this knowledge conveyed to this girl? Through mental telepathy, spiritism, vibration? Science cannot explain this strange phenomenon, but they know something is at work in another dimension of the universe which seems to represent a higher mind a spiritual something akin to the soul that works for man. 
that guides him in the time of need. Put your problems to this higher mind within. Ask for a solution, then quietly go to sleep, confident the answer will come to you, either in your sleep or the next day when you awaken. The Indwelling Father 3. If you wish to pick up thoughts of greatness, such as those that inspired the geniuses of the past, sit quietly in your room alone and meditate on the great person whose inspiration you wish to contact. If it is Beethoven, hold his name in your mind. Acquire as much knowledge as you can of his life. Be conversant with his great music. Then sit and wait for the highest inspiration to come through to you. Many musicians are able to produce great music by this method of artificially inducing the inspiration of the great composers of the past. If it is a scientific discovery or formula that you want or an invention or business success, hold in mind the thought of an outstanding man in the field you have chosen. Then let your mind ask of the indwelling father that you be given the same identical ability and inspiration as that which motivated the genius you have picked. 4. You can convey messages to other persons through this process of speaking to the higher mind within you. Tell this higher mind what it is you want to convey. Hold the name and face of the person in mind, then talk to them as you would if they were there in person. Thoughts being electrical will eventually hit the higher mind of that person making him receptive to your projective thoughts. When you receive such thoughts, you may think they are your own thoughts, but actually they could be the projected thoughts of another person. It is no more mysterious than the process of transmitting messages by wireless. It is the same principle involved as both are concerned with the creation and projection of electrical impulses. How she got a raise in salary. A young lady who came to our lectures learned of this method for projecting her thoughts and she told me she wanted to imprint on her boss's mind the thought she deserved a raise in salary. Every day at lunch time she sat for a few moments concentrating on her boss's face and saying over and over to herself, you will give me a $10 a week raise in salary. She thought this intently. She visualized him doing it. She felt the emotion of joy at the fulfillment of it. And she kept up her actions every day for two full months before she got results. One day, her boss called her into his office suddenly and blurted out, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to give you a $10 raise. Mental messages from other people. Five, you can also receive mental messages from others through this same process of concentration and visualization. Hold in mind the face of the person you wish to receive messages from. Concentrate your mind on that person for a while and then sit perfectly still and wait and see what thoughts come into your mind. Sometimes the person will begin to speak to you mentally and you may actually think you are imagining these things but very often you will find that the person has actually sent out some such thoughts to you at some time. A young lady Dr. Ryan tells about went on a train trip to San Francisco and when she got off, she kept seeing the face of her mother clearly before her eyes. She became alarmed and rushed in and telephoned her home. Her mother had been sending frantic thoughts to her to tell her to return immediately as her father was seriously ill. 6. Many times your mind will receive an inspiration to do something through an impulse that keeps returning and will not go away. This may come in the form of a vision or picture or a thought that persists in returning unbidden to your mind. At such times, follow through on your hunch, for it may be some direct guidance that can guide you to fulfillment of some dream you have. This man attracted a home through this power. An instance of this type of persistent thought was that of a young man who owned a restaurant in an eastern city. He drove by a beautiful home on the outskirts of the city one day and something made him stop the car and sit and stare at the home. Then a thought came to him. I would like to own that house. He felt an instant surge that he would one day live in it, but he dismissed it from his mind as sheer nonsense for it was a big home. Obviously beyond his limited means, he had a wife and small child and his restaurant barely gave them a good living. 
but he found himself driving by the house every day and he would stop and examine the house carefully, dreaming of it as being his. He kept this up for several weeks when one day he noticed a middle-aged, gray-haired lady sitting in his restaurant looking at him strangely. Finally, she spoke to him. She said, I've been observing you driving by my house every day for weeks and finally, I became curious as to your purpose in doing this. I took your license number and checked on your address. That is how I found you. Now, what in the world are you up to? The young man told her of his fixation about the house. It's obvious, he said, that it's way beyond what I can afford, but it's just the type of dream house I've always wanted. Then the lady said, it's a strange thing, but my husband died recently. The house is too big for me as I am alone. I have long wanted to sell it. Now, what can you afford to pay down on it? The young man mentioned a ridiculously small sum and the woman told him she would accept it. The purchase price she set on the house was reasonable and they concluded a deal that gave him possession of the house and furnishings within a month. The formula for receiving great ideas, think, visualize, feel, act. The whole universe teems with action from the tiniest microscopic life in the soil to the higher organism, man. All creation vibrates and pulsates to a higher command from some form of intelligence. Your mind is such a commanding power, and it can set into motion the vibratory forms in the universe, creating the picture of the things you want to attract. The formula for doing this is a very simple one. Think first. What shall you think? Think inspired thoughts. Think creatively. Think dynamically. Think big. Think rich thoughts. Think successful thoughts. Think healthy thoughts. Thinking sets into motion the electrical pulsations which start the universal action necessary to create in the pattern of what you think. Visualize. Visualize what? Visualize great things. Visualize achievement, perfection, the situations in which you wish to be, friends, love, a home, a car, more money. Hold a mental and visual image of these things so creative intelligence within you may crystallize and project these images to the outer world of reality. Feel or emotionalize your thoughts. Feel how? Feel expansive and powerful. Feel healthy and strong. Feel rich and successful. Feel confident and poised. Emotionalize your dreams and ideas by feeling how it would be if you achieved the things you dream of attaining. Act. The dynamic universal law of action. Act how? Act with confidence, decisiveness, be aggressive, and have boldness in your actions. Play the part you wish to be on the stage of life. Are you holding in consciousness a picture of yourself as a hero or a villain? A prince or a pauper? Make your own decision as to what you want to be, but set into motion the universal law of action by taking that first step here and now to make your dreams come true. In formulating your plans for future courses of dynamic action, check first your assets and liabilities. In this way, you will know better how to correct the things that are wrong with you and which may be keeping you from attaining your objective. Look over the following list of assets and liabilities and write on a sheet of paper what your own may be from this list. Also, add others that may not be on this list. Then carefully appraise them and work to correct your liabilities and change them into assets. Check your assets and your liabilities. Make out two lists similar to the following in head one, assets and the other liabilities. Under assets, list all the things in your favor such as as those given in this list. Then under liabilities, list all the things that you feel you do wrong, such as those given below. Then study the two lists and correct your weaknesses or liabilities and strengthen your assets. Be honest in appraising yourself. Then when you see your faults in black and white, it will be an incentive to do something constructive about changing them into strength of character. Are these your assets? 1. I am ambitious and eager to succeed and strive constantly to achieve my high goal in life. 2. I have some ability and am working to elevate my mind by acquiring knowledge that will prove helpful in the future. 3. I am determined and persistent and do not give up easily. 
or I never allow discouragement to hold off of me and make me moody and depressed for long periods of time. 5. I refuse to believe anything is impossible to achieve. 6. I have vision and foresight and I use it daily. 7. I constantly strive to use my imagination in trying to see my way clear to future constructive actions. 8. I do not waste my time and energy worrying about things, but I do something constructive about solving my problems. 9. I refuse to waste my time on useless pursuits that lead to nowhere. 10. I conserve my money and handle it wisely. 11. I control my temper in situations where arguments or disagreements arise. 12. I fight bad habits, including procrastination, laziness, and overindulgence in smoking, drinking, and eating. 13. I am friendly and helpful to everyone I meet. 14. I possess a strong will and never allow others to impose their will on me to achieve their selfish purposes. 15. I am generous in all my dealings with others. 16. I apply the golden rule to my life, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. 17. I live under the highest standards morally, ethically, socially, physically, and spiritually. 18. I give full value for everything I receive from life. 19. My life is neat and orderly and I am as efficient as possible. 20. I am fair and honest in my dealings with all people. 21. I do not hold grudges or indulge negative emotions of hate, revenge, jealousy, greed, envy, or selfishness. 22. I use the emotion of love constructively in relation to the world. 23. I am punctual and on time when I make appointments. Are these your liabilities? 1. I am inclined to procrastinate and put things off. 2. I am afraid of important people and limit my contacts to those who are inferior or unimportant. 3. I do not have great ability and do nothing to improve myself. 4. I am weak and vacillating in my personality and cannot make decisions easily. 5. I am easily discouraged, pessimistic, and lack faith in myself and my future. 6. My personality is inadequate, self-conscious, and inferior, and I make no effort to change it. 7. I spend my spare time on movies, TV, sports, and having a good time, and do nothing to improve myself. 8. I seldom read constructive books or magazines. 9. I get moody and depressed often and feel that nothing I do is of any use in changing my life. 10. I feel my background and lack of education are holding me back in life. 11. I do not use my imagination to visualize a new future for myself. 12. I am a worry bird and do nothing to solve my problems. 13. I borrow money and get in debt and can't pay it back. 14. I am always late for appointments and keep people waiting. 15. I believe in getting the best of people before they get the best of me. 16. I believe the world owes me a living and I don't have to make any effort to earn it. 17. I constantly blow up and have fits of temper over little things that annoy me. 18. I am negative in my thinking and indulge such thoughts as fear, worry, hate, jealousy, envy, and greed daily. 19. I am disorderly and live in a confused, chaotic, and dirty environment. I do nothing to change it for the better. 20. I dislike people intensely and believe they are out to get the best of me. 21. I believe in the philosophy of dog-eat-dog. 22. I gamble and dissipate my money, time, and energy. 23. I use the love force as a sexual outlet and overdue on the physical and emotional planes. 24. I let my bad habits dominate my mind and body. 25. I am weak-willed and easily dominated by others. 26. I look for ways of getting the best of everyone I meet. When you have finished making out your own lists of your own assets and your own liabilities, set to work constructively each day to make changes in your way of thinking and living. Take such an inventory of yourself every six months to see how you have progressed. Then keep on with this self-improvement regime until you have overcome all the negative habits that put you and your life on the debit side of the ledger. This concludes Become a Receiving Station for Great Ideas by Anthony Norvell. So, the technique that he gives, the method to become a receiving station, involves one, 
Each night upon retiring is picturing the things in your mind's eye that you want to achieve and wish to attract. And secondly, you ask the Father within to point out the way to your right work. And third, you meditate on geniuses of the past that inspire you and focus on them to bring up their own discoveries. And four, you convey messages to others through the speaking of the higher mind. Tell the higher mind what it is you want to convey and hold their name and face in your mind and talk to them in person. Five, you receive mental images from others and hold in mind the face of the person you wish to receive messages from. Concentrate your mind on that person for a while, then sit perfectly still and wait and see what thoughts come into your mind. And six, many times your mind will receive inspiration to do something through an impulse that keeps returning and will not go away. Pay attention to your impulses. This chapter focuses on the extrasensory aspects of ideas. We are receiving ideas from people and things all the time. And you need to put yourself in an open and wonderful space to receive these ideas by focusing on people, places, and things that inspire you. And this is very possible by following the guidance in this chapter. The formula is super simple. You can't forget it. The formula for receiving great ideas is to think, visualize, feel, and act. You think first, what is it you want to think? You think expired thoughts, you think creatively, you think dynamically, you think successful thoughts, and then you visualize. What is it you want to visualize? You visualize great things, achievements, perfection in situations, love, wealth, happiness, service, and then you feel or emotionalize your thoughts. How does it feel? You feel expansive and powerful. You feel healthy and strong, rich and successful. And then you act with confidence and decisiveness, knowing that you have followed the formula to receive great ideas. When these ideas come to you and you follow the promptings of the universal mind, wonderful things will happen to you. You will write that book. You will sing that song. You will create that business and wonderful benefits come to you as well. You will become prosperous. And as is indicated in this book, it is the million dollar secret hidden in your mind. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Be sure to check out the Anthony Norvell playlist where we have a ton of really amazing material from this author. I'd love it if you checked out my art. You can find it at www.newearth.art. And welcome to the reality revolution. Thank mm-hmm. you.